Hello everyone, we will be starting in just a moment. Hi everyone. Well, another Saturday. So, I hope you've had a good week. And today we are going to be talking about negotiations and compromising, which basically means meeting people in the middle. I want something, you want something different. We can't all get exactly what we want. We have to meet in the middle and, you know, compromise. So, let's uh let's jump right in. So, are you good at negotiating? Or do you have any tips for negotiating? Um, so, what we're going to do is talk about negotiating very quickly. And, yeah. So, I, when, I think, when I think of negotiating, specifically like the skill of being good at negotiating, I think of going to a market, not a supermarket, but like, you know, a market, um, and negotiating prices. The seller wants to sell it for this price. I want to buy it for a little bit lower. And negotiating and being good at that and trying to get the price lower from somebody. You can also do this on like uh, used markets like uh, in Korea, Chunkunara. If you're trying to buy something used from neighbor, um, you might try and negotiate the price or Tongan market, I guess, as well. Um, are you good at that? Have you, do you try to negotiate the price down? Do you have any good tips? Um, while you're thinking of that, I will tell you one of my tips that I've used in a marketplace to get the price I want. And I think it's a good tip in life. It's a good tip for a lot of different situations. And that is be prepared to walk away. I think we're going to look at this a little bit more later. Be prepared to walk away. So even if you really want something, if you show the other person that you really, 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 really want it and they're selling you something that, and they can see that you really want this, that you have to buy it, they're not going to lower the price. They have no incentive, no reason to lower the price. They know that you want it and they know you're going to buy it no matter what the price is. So if you're in that situation, you're situated to lose because if the seller knows you want it, you're going to have to pay the price that they want. But if you're ready to walk away, if you're ready to say, you know what? No, I don't want to pay this price and I will walk away. That makes the other person have to compromise. Now the other person has to compromise if they really want to sell this item. And then they will tend to meet you in the middle a little bit more. Um, I'm just getting some notes in the message board. Uh, Luna says, I usually try to discount at Goto Mall at Gosok Terminal Station. I don't know what go, go to go to mall. I don't know. I don't I don't normally go to the coastal terminal station. Um, but yeah, these kind of markets you can generally uh, negotiate in. And Fretchy says in Korea, even though it's a market, prices are usually fixed. So hard to negotiate. But I agree with your professor. Yeah. Nowadays, more and more and more things are fixed price. But um, yeah. Luna says, I usually start my sentence with only, so like really trying to be close with the seller. Um, okay, good. Yeah, I've had some experience in different countries uh, negotiating prices, and yeah, it can be it can be difficult. It can be uh, difficult if you don't speak the language or just in different marketplaces, the prices are just more fixed. Okay, let's see. So here are some of my compromising tips. This is less about trying to sell something or buy something. And this is more about one person wants one thing, another person wants another thing. So here what I'm talking about is maybe you and your friend uh, both want to meet and do something on the weekend. But you want to have a relaxing weekend. 
Maybe just go to a cafe, then do a restaurant. Just relax and not do anything too exciting. But your friend really wants to go to the amusement park, ride some roller coasters, things like that. Those are very different things. And you want to meet your friend, and your friend wants to meet you, but you don't want to do what your friend wants to do. And your friend doesn't want to do what you want to do. So you have to compromise. You have to meet in the middle. Both of you are not going to be 100% happy. But if one person is 0% happy, that's a problem. So one compromising tip is don't always try to be right. If you always try to be right or you always try to win the argument or win the compromise, you're going to lose <laughs> your friends. Um, yeah, you can't always be right. You can't always demand that the other person follows you. It will not work out well. Yeah, maybe you will not be friends anymore, says Luna. Exactly. So you have to be willing to compromise. You have to be willing to meet people in the middle. Really important. Compromising tip number two, let things go. Um, yeah, as Elsa would say, let it go. And what do I mean by let go? I mean that sometimes with compromise and sometimes you're actually arguing with people and maybe you're having a fight with uh, your significant other, like your husband or wife, and you need to compromise and end the fight and meet in the middle but you feel like I'm right. Why should I why should I compromise? Why should I let it go? I'm right. But sometimes you have to let things go. If you don't let everything or some things go, then there's always going to be strife. There's always going to be conflict between you and the other person. So yeah, you gotta you gotta let things go sometimes. It's just it's so much easier to let things go and meet in the middle rather than always trying to be right or prove that you're right. Um, let's see, I like some of the comments say, uh, I love to do what my friend wants to do. Then you're a very good friend, but I don't always want to do what my friends want to do. <laughs> um, uh, Betty says, let me go. Then I let you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, everyone's trying to quote the let it go song. Okay. Let's see. Let's go to the next slide. Be willing to change. Yeah, this kind of goes in line with a let it go. That you have to let go what you want or what you think is right. And be willing to change direction. Be willing to try something new. So in my, other, in my earlier example of you wanting to go to the cafe and your friend wanting to go to the amusement park, I think it's good to be willing to change. Maybe you don't often go to an amusement park and you think, okay, fine, you know, it might be fun. I might not like it, but I need to try something new. Be willing to change. Be willing to try something new and interesting that maybe you haven't done in the past. <clears throat> this gets harder and harder the older you get, I think, because you get fixed in your ways and you kind of know what you want and you know what you don't want. So it does become more difficult that but I, I really don't like amusement parks, you might think. But maybe maybe there's something new. Maybe you haven't tried an amusement park in so long that you don't know anymore. So it's always good to try new things. Let go of your old habits and try new things. Keep an open mind. This is another hard one. Keep an open mind. Try to be willing to do new things. Try to be willing to open your up to the other person's opinion, other person's side. Um, so when you're compromising or when you're negotiating, we could be talking about negotiating and compromise. There's so many situations where you negotiate and compromise. We could be talking about buying something and you want to lower the price. We could talk about negotiating with your boss that you want a raise, you want a higher salary. That's a negotiation. You could be negotiating with your friend about where to go for your uh, trip, your weekend trip. You could be negotiating with your husband or wife about what new car you want to buy. There's a lot of situations where we can negotiate and compromise. And people usually, I know I do, have strong opinions. We know what we want. I know that I like this and I don't like that. But we need to keep an open mind because other people don't feel like that. And we need to try to meet in the middle. If you're always very rigid and hard, it's going to be difficult for you talking to people and making decisions with other people. 
Uh, let's see. Let me look at some of the comments. Uh, yes, but changing something is not always easy for everyone. People love their comfort zone, says Fretchy. I agree. Yeah, the comfort zone is comfortable, of course, but we have to get out of it sometimes. Uh, Luna says, my husband wants me to apply for a triathlon, but I'm not willing to. That's a, triathlon's a big thing. <laughs> if you're already athletic and competitive, I can see that. But just out of the blue, apply for a triathlon. That's um, wow. Yeah, that's that. That's a big challenge. Uh, Fred, she says yes. Also negotiating with myself. That's a good point. We have to negotiate with ourselves sometimes. I, you know, tell yourself, okay, if I, if I go exercise at the gym, then I'll allow myself to have a snack afterwards or something. You have to make a negotiation or a compromise with yourself sometimes. Uh, yeah, I always negotiate with myself eating chocolates and too many carbs every day. Yeah, I understand that. Nowadays, because we're just all stuck inside because of COVID, not able to do anything, we're all eating way too much and exercising way too little. Okay, next. Show appreciation. <coughs> so, if the other person, what do I mean by show appreciation? If you're compromising with the person and you're trying to meet in the middle, that's great. But if you're on this side and you make your friend come a little bit closer to you, not in the middle, but closer to your side, you need to show appreciation. You need to say thank you for coming to my side and being willing to change and meet me closer to where I am. Some people have a harder time compromising and negotiating and they just, they can't meet exactly in the middle. It's just very difficult for their personality. So you need to sometimes go a little bit closer to their side, even if you don't want to. And if you do go closer to their side, they should be appreciative. They should say thank you and vice versa. If someone comes more to your side and agrees more with you, be appreciative. From my earlier example, if you and a friend are deciding where to go, cafe or amusement park, and you want to go to the cafe and your friend wants to go to the amusement park, and you go to the amusement park with your friend, your friend should be appreciative. They should say thank you. Maybe buy you some snacks at the amusement park. Maybe, you know, the next time they have to go to the cafe with you. They need to show appreciation. It's a great way to uh, show that, yes, you compromised, but you're okay with it. Okay. So let's try to practice with these situations. Let's uh, try to compromise a little bit. Show how we can compromise using some of the tips from earlier. Now, let me go through the tips one more time. Just a moment so that we can remember them. So the first is don't always try to be right. The second is let things go. The third is be willing to change. Number four is keep an open mind. And number five, show appreciation. Now, let's look at some of these situations and say how the participants in these situations can compromise. Your partner, wife or husband, believes that you are spending too much money eating out. So you are spending too much money going to restaurants or ordering food to your house, things like that. You know you should spend less money, but you also hate cooking and cleaning at home. Suggest a compromise that will make both of you happy. What can you do, or what can both of you do, to make each other happy? <coughs> so you, your husband thinks or your wife thinks that you're spending too much money ordering food or going to restaurants but you're doing it because you hate cooking and cleaning. So how can you compromise? Where can you meet in the middle to make both people happy? Let me know. I'll wait for your comments in the uh, in the comment section in the chat. How can you compromise? <coughs> 
Okay, Fretchy says, I would suggest if my partners can cook for me, I would spend less money eating outside. So I will suggest that. So if your partner cooks, but who cleans? You said who cooks, but who's doing the cleaning? That's a big part of the household chores. When you cook, you have to clean, and that, that's a pain. Uh, young Two Mom says, I will go to a cheap restaurant. <laughs> that's a compromise. Yeah, a cheaper restaurant. What's cheap? Like, what? Kimbap Nara? That's very cheap. Where, where would you go? <laughs> what is the level of cheapness here? Uh, Luna says, I understand what you are saying, but I don't have much time to spend for cooking. What about we order side dishes and I just cook rice and soup? There's a good there's a good compromise in Korea. You can just order the side dishes and then cook rice and soup at home, which is a little bit simpler. And yeah, that's a good compromise. You're going to be eating the same thing a lot. But it works. Does anyone else have some suggestions? Betty says, we decide on the order, so maybe you decide what to order together so you don't spend too much money. That might work. Uh, Fretchy says, or I might suggest we both cook and clean together. That's better than doing it alone. That's a good point. If your kitchen's big enough. Some people's kitchen, having two people trying to cook and clean at the same time can get a little bit uh, difficult. Uh, Dosoku says, I would use a delivery service to eat some food. Well, that's the whole problem. Is <laughs> That's the problem here. One person is using the delivery service too much. And the other person is saying, you're spending too much money. Uh, Daun 76 says, well, yes, I do think I really spent way too much money ordering in. But you know how much I hate doing the dishes. So how about I cook, you clean. It would be very thankful if we help each other here. So yeah, that's that's... These are good compromising. The big compromise that I keep seeing again and again is I will cook, you clean. Or you cook and I will clean. Because if one person is doing all the cooking and all the cleaning, that's not fair. That's not nice. You need to compromise. So I understand. It, my goodness, I understand that you don't always want to cook and clean. You need to order food sometimes. Uh, last night, we didn't want to cook. We didn't want to clean. We were tired of it all week. I have two children, so cooking and cleaning is just a constant job. It never ends. So we ordered Vietnamese food last night. Pho. It was great. It was very good food. And very easy to clean up. No cooking required. Sometimes you just have to do that. But most of the time, we are cooking at home and trying not to spend way too much money. But market curly and things are so tempting nowadays. It's so easy to order food and delivery and... Yeah, very, you get lazy. COVID has made people lazy at home. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we'll get some more of the comments. In says, I'll get a part-time job for eating out. So you're going to get a part-time job just to order food. That is dedication. Uh, and Young Two Mom says, I will eat out within the cost of living. So only eating what you can afford. But that, that gets very difficult because, um, you know, Food gets expensive if you want to try a variety of food. And I want a variety of food. I want to eat gyochun chicken. I want to eat Vietnamese food. I want to eat all sorts of things. Okay, let's look at the next situation. Situation two. You really want to go on vacation to a country with nice beaches, but your friend wants to go somewhere they can ski. You want to travel together, but how can you come to a compromise? So, you're going to go on a trip, a holiday with your friend. You want to go somewhere with nice beaches, but your friend wants to go somewhere that they can ski, like, like snow skiing, not water skiing. You want to travel together, but how can you come to a compromise? Give me your thoughts. And Luna says, I did cooking and cleaning for 10 years and I never asked my husband to do it. But now he is on paternity leave. He says, how did you do it? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> moms have a difficult job. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. Yeah, 10 years. Wow. And you never asked your husband to do anything. You are a saint. You are an angel. But your husband needs to do stuff. <laughs> At my home, we generally have one rule about cooking and cleaning. It doesn't always apply, but usually it applies. And I'm okay with it. The rule is, if my wife cooks dinner... I clean the dishes. If I cook dinner, 
I clean the dishes. That's generally the rule. <laughs> but I don't mind cleaning dishes, so it's okay. And we, it's kind of a joke. We all clean dishes. We all do a lot of the work in the house. Because with two kids, I mean, it's the house is always a disaster. Um, let's see. Betty says, I mean, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, I cook and clean up. And I guess your partner does the work on Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. I don't know, I guess. Uh, young two mom says, I can't compromise. Oh, you got to compromise sometimes. You got to meet in the middle. Okay, this situation, you want to go to a place with a nice beach, your friend wants to go skiing, how do you compromise? Luna says, I'm afraid I don't know how to ski. If it is okay, how about we go on a vacation to a warm place and then we go for skiing for a day later so you can teach me. Hmm. I mean, I understand that's a good compromise, but if I were the friend, I would be like, oh, really? So you want to go to vacation where you want to go, and then for one day we can go skiing, but I have to spend the day teaching you to ski? I can't ski? I would not be too happy with that compromise. I would want to uh, go skiing for a few days at a ski resort. <coughs> Frenchie says, maybe I will just follow my friend's opinion this time, but I would ask her to follow mine next time. There, see, that's a, good, that's, a, that's a way to compromise, too. You don't have to always meet in the middle, literally. You can do what they want to do one time and what you want to do the next time, or vice versa. You can take turns. That's also a very good compromise. Just like washing the dishes and cooking. Maybe one day you cook dinner and wash dishes, and the next day your partner cooks dinner and washes dishes. You can take turns. That is also a way to compromise. Um, In says, water skiing is similar to real ski, so I'll find beaches providing water skiing. That's kind of... <laughs> Kind of a compromise, but again, I feel like your friend is getting the uh, the short end of the stick. Have you ever heard that expression? Um, the short end of the stick. I'll write this in the chat. Someone is getting the short end of the stick. That means in a deal, uh, someone is not getting the best part of that deal. That person is not getting a very good deal or a very good compromise. So in that deal, you're going exactly where you want to go. You're going to the beach. You're getting exactly what you want. And you're telling your friend, sorry, you can't snow ski, but eh, water skiing, it's kind of the same. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Your friend is getting the short end of the stick there. Not, not a very good deal. Uh, let's see. Doso Gu says, I think I have to go on vacation twice. Yeah, you could. I mean, yeah, you could do that. You could take turns going to where each of you wants to go. Let's see, how, well, how do you compromise when I want to go to the beaches and my friend wants to go skiing? I'll take separate vacations in this situation. Now, for me, but I, I created this situation. I mean, I created this uh, lesson, this lecture, so this is easy for me to answer. I have the perfect answer for the compromise. You want to go skiing? You want to go to the beaches? We're going to New Zealand. Let's go to New Zealand. If you don't know, New Zealand has lovely sunny beaches and snowy mountains where you can ski just like two or three hours drive away from each other. So one day you can be at the beach relaxing, drive for two hours and you're skiing. It's super simple. Go to New Zealand or another place that has uh, snowy mountains and sunny beaches relatively close to each other. There you go, New Zealand. Plus their coronavirus numbers are really low. It's just a wonderful place to be right now. That, that's my compromise. Plus, you can go and see where Lord of the Rings was filmed. I mean, it's for me, it's the perfect vacation. I can't complain. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Next. Situation three. You have worked at the same job for three years but you still have not had a raise. You feel that you deserve a raise, but your boss says that it is not possible because there is not enough money. What kind of compromise can the two of you make? So you've worked at the same job for three years, but you still have not had a raise. So you're still making the same money as when you started. You feel that you deserve a raise, maybe because you've been working hard, 
but your boss says that there is, it is not possible because there is not enough money to give you a raise. So what kind of compromise can the two of you make? Because the boss wants to compromise with you. Because if you don't, com if he doesn't compromise, maybe you'll quit. Maybe you're a very good worker. He doesn't want to lose you. But there's not enough money to give you a raise. So what kind of compromise can you make in this situation? Luna, that's not really a compromise. <laughs> she says, if you don't raise my salary, fire me. Not really a compromise. That's more of a threat. I think we need to, um, as we're doing this, I need to explain the difference between a compromise and blackmail. Does anyone know what blackmail is? Um, I'll wait. I'll wait in the comments. Keep answering the situation three, but if you also know what blackmail is, write write what you think blackmail is in the in the comments. I'll and if I don't see the right explanation, I'll explain it in a minute. But I think we need to understand the difference between a compromise and blackmail. Uh, Fretchy says I would talk with my boss if I will be the first person to get a raise if the mon company gets more money. Okay, that's that's an interesting one. I've never thought of that. You're putting a lot of faith in your boss, though, because your boss might say, oh, of course, you'll be the first one to get money. But if your boss is not a trustworthy person, I wouldn't believe that. Uh, Luna says, I can't imagine that situation. I've never been in that situation. And Luna says, blackmail is a threat. Yeah, blackmail, yeah, it's basically a threat. It's saying, but I mean, a compromise is also a positive, not threat, but a positive agreement where it's like if you do this I'll do this that's a compromise but a blackmail is if you don't do this I will do this so it's a threat it's like if you don't give me a raise I will quit blackmail is usually a little bit more subtle than that a little bit there's usually more like I'll do something worse to you that's not really a blackmail that's more of a threat blackmail is more that I know something bad about you so if you don't give me money I will tell everybody this bad thing about you. That's more blackmail. But again, it's just a specific kind of threat and a negative kind of compromise. Um, I will work only for my salary, says Young Two Mom. So it's like I won't work extra hard because I'm not getting paid extra. Okay. And Frenchie says, yeah, threatening somebody is blackmail. And oh, see, this is what this is what I was thinking. Uh, Tae Jong Mu has my answer. Same salary, reduced work days. Yeah, if your boss can't give you more money, they can give you more vacation. Or maybe you can come in a little bit later in the morning. Or you can take an extra day or two off every month. Something like that. If Money is not the only thing in a job. Money is not the only thing. We, st we think that way. We think that, oh, money is the most important thing. It's important, but it's not the most important. I've had... I've had jobs before where I made tons and tons and tons of money, but I worked tons and tons and tons, and I never had a break. It was horrible. Really, really, really bad. But then I've had jobs where I make a little bit less money, but I have tons of freedom and tons of vacation, and I prefer that. So if you have to negotiate, you have to think, if I can't get more money, can I get more vacation time? Can I get more freedom? So find somewhere that that your boss, something that your boss can give you, somewhere that you can negotiate and meet in the middle. Okay, let me look at some of these comments. In says, maybe I'll find other benefits from the company, like zero interest loan. That's another interest one I never thought of. The companies can give you zero interest loans in Korea? I've never heard of that. Maybe that's not available to foreigners like me. Uh, Dosoku says, I'll only work as much as I need. That's a very similar answer to Yun Tu Mom, what she said. Luna says, I can take, okay, this zero interest loan thing again. I've never heard of this. That's interesting. So is the, is the zero interest loan, is that for like buying an apartment or how, how big are these loans? Um, and maybe get some stocks or shares. Okay. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Stocks or shares is a good way to um, make some money. So 
have, if your company is a publicly traded company, if it's on the stock exchange, you could maybe negotiate to get some stocks. And that would be a good way to make some money. Um, yeah. And people are telling me, no, 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 you can't get zero interest loans. Okay. Okay, that just went right over my head. I, I don't know about that in Korea. Never, never gotten a loan from my boss or company. Okay, let's keep going. Now, CeeLo Green says, tolerance, compromise, understanding, acceptance, patience. I want those all to be very sharp tools in my shed. So a shed is a place, I haven't really seen them in Korea that often. At some apartment complexes, they have sheds. But in the U.S., in the U.K., many people have a shed in their backyard or back garden. And a shed is this little building where you put your lawnmower and tools for keeping your garden nice and clean. So it's like a little outdoor closet kind of and it's where you keep your tools and we say sharpest tools in the shed to say things skills or things that we're very good at so this is he didn't make this up this is a phrase that we use that oh he's a sharp tool he's very sharp you might have heard that before that oh she's very sharp it means that she's very smart or very skilled the opposite can also be true if you want to call somebody stupid you can say, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. So that would mean that he's not very smart or not very skilled. I'll write that out for you. So yeah, if you want to say that someone is not very smart or not very skilled, you can say he isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. Who is <laughs> Frenchy says, who is he? I'm usually talking about myself in the third person. <clears throat> so yeah, we could say me. Um, okay. Oh, oh, maybe you're asking who CeeLo Green is. I believe that he is, you know, I made this a while ago and I don't remember who he is. <laughs> you can Google him. Look up CeeLo Green. I just found this quotation and I thought it was a really good quotation. Um, yeah. Oh, Kidoki. So tolerance. Tolerance would mean understanding other people. Tolerance is a very important part of compromise. Um, so tolerance means that you don't judge other people. Compromise, we've been talking about understanding, trying to understand other people's viewpoints and sides. Acceptance, accepting people who, for, for who they are. And patience, you need to be patient with people, maybe people that you don't agree with. <clears throat> Okay, now let's keep moving on. I think we're going to look at a few phrases that we can use when compromising. So the first phrase is, I see your point, however. And you can use this phrase to say that you understand someone, but that you don't completely agree with them. So, I see your point, however, means that you understand them, but you don't agree with them. So my sentence here is, I see your point, however, I don't think that's the most important point. Or you can say, I see your point, however, uh, I don't want to go to the amusement park because I can't ride roller coasters. They scare me. Or I see your point, however, I don't want to go to the ski lodge because I don't know how to ski and I won't have fun. So let's do something where we can both have fun. I want you to write a sentence using this phrase in the chat right now. I see your point, however. So I want you to practice by writing it because if you write it, you will remember it more. I see your point, comma, however, da 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 da. So try to write something, even if it's very simple, in the chat, and then we'll move on to the next phrase. Ooh, Frenchie says, I see your point, however, I don't believe you. That's good. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Let's see. I see your point. However, your suggestion is so expensive, says N. Luna says, I see your point. However, you are losing out the main part. You're losing our main part. Okay. Maybe losing, I think better it would be say to losing sight of the main idea. Sounds more natural. Losing sight of the main idea. Okay, so as we go through these, we're going to look at a few of these phrases. I want to say something very quickly that when I keep thinking about compromise and negotiation, I think back to the times that I have compromised in conversations with people. And as I'm an American, it's hard to avoid politics that have been uh, going on in the American political system for the past few years. And being as I come from a very rural, that's hard to say, rural part of the U.S., my viewpoints, my political viewpoints are very different now from people where my hometown is. So if I go to my hometown or talk to people from my hometown, if we go into, if we venture into politics, we can argue, we can fight, and that's not great. So understand that even if you want to compromise and you want to negotiate, sometimes other people will not negotiate. They will not compromise. Zero percent. And there is just, in my opinion, there is no point arguing with that type of person. So if you're in that kind of situation and you are arguing and you're trying to compromise, you're trying to understand, you're trying to be patient, as CeeLo Green said in that quotation, but the other person's just not meeting you in the middle at all, sometimes the best thing to say is just, okay, and just change the topic and talk about something different. You can't meet everyone in the middle. You can't compromise with everyone. So be prepared to, like I said before, walk away. Sometimes that's the only thing you can do. So I just, the more I think about compromise, I'm thinking about politics and arguments I've had with people over politics. And it's just, um, some people are really stuck in their ways. I'm going to write that out because that's a really good uh, little phrase. Some people are really stuck in their ways. And that means that people just, some people don't want to change. Some people do not have an open mind. Some people will not compromise, no matter what. And there's just no point in trying to compromise with that kind of person. Okay, um, let me look at the chat room. Uh, uh, let's see. Dosugu says, I see your point. However, I don't want to do that. Well, that's very blunt and straight to the point. Uh, Fretchy says, I see your point. However, that's what we want. That's really what we want. Uh... Luna says, we do that too. That's why I don't talk about politics even with my family. Yeah, that can be difficult. Um, if you want to fight someone, use politics. It's effective. Yeah, if you want to fight with someone, start talking about politics because that's an easy way to fight. Um, uh, Chung Daun says, that is so true. It is good to walk away sometimes. Yeah, it's sad but true. Sometimes you just got to walk away. Um, next one. How flexible can you be on that? So this is not literally talking about physical flexibility. This is talking about your ability to be flexible with a compromise. So you can use this phrase to ask if a person can make a compromise with you. So my example is, you said that we can talk about giving me more vacation days. How flexible can you be on that? That means they're asking, how many vacation days can you give me? Are we talking about one extra vacation day a month? Are we talking about two or three? How flexible are you on this issue? How much can you change? So we normally say this phrase when we're wanting something from the other person. How flexible can you be on that? How, how much can you give me? How much can you change and meet me in the middle? So if you can think of an example, please write it in the chat room.
Luna says, I'm the most flexible person. I can give you three months. Three months of vacation? Wow. That is pretty flexible. Oh, because my dad had summer vacation for three months. That's nice. I, I'm going to... I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The reason that people become teachers or professors is because of the vacation. <laughs> the vacation is very nice. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely perk of being a teacher. A very lovely perk. That was my little top secret into the world of education. Uh, Fredchi says, you told me you will give me a promotion. How flexible can you be on that? So it's like, how big of a promotion maybe can you give me? Um, people are agreeing that we love vacation. Yeah, but not for the teacher of third graders in high school. Yeah, well, well, in Korea, yeah. Uh, you're saying, I should point this out really fast because I see this all the time. Uh, who said that? Uh, Luna said, but not for the teacher of third graders in high school. So you're talking about the final year, the year that the students have to do their uh, Sunung test, the Korean SAT. But I want to point out that we don't say in English third graders in high school. That's very confusing for English speakers because we hear third grade to me means elementary school. It means students who are like, how old are third graders? Students who are like nine years old, maybe. So when we say grades, we only use, we go up. So like generally... Grades one through six are elementary school. Then like grades seven and eight are middle school or seven, eight, nine. And nine, 10, 11, 12 are high school. So we would say like grade 12 or 12th grade. I guess Canada and the UK tend to say grade 12 and Americans say 12th grade. Or you can just say seniors. High school seniors leaves very little to dispute. So it's if you want to say like third grade high schoolers, it's better to say high school seniors. Because just like for university, university has four levels, year one, year two, year three, year four, usually for bachelor's degree. We say freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. By the way, sophomore, it literally translates from, I believe, Latin. It means a stupid person who thinks they are smart. That's what sophomore means. A stupid person who thinks they are smart. Because generally after one year at university, you think, oh, I'm so smart. I'm the smartest person in the room. I've been studying these things and I'm just, I'm learning so much. Sophomores are usually still stupid, but they think that they're smart. That's why it literally translates. You can look up the etymology or the history of the word sophomore. So anyway, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior for university and for high school. You can say the same for high school in the US and Canada. It, it gets more complicated because like in the UK, they have a different system. They have sixth form, which is um, just different. So generally though, high school senior, people will understand better. Uh, let me get back to the chat room. Um, uh, Dosugu said, you said that we have to go to the office on weekends. How flexible, how flexible can you not we can you. How flexible can you be on that? Um, yeah, going to the office on weekends. That's not fun. Um, uh, I can spend $300. How flexible can you be on that? Uh, so you're like negotiating a price. So like, can you bring the price down to meet me with the money I have? That's good. Um, Frenchie told me, you, you told me you will give me a discount. How flexible can you be on that? So how big can the discount be? Uh, Luna says, think smart, bit stupid. Yeah, it's just, it's just the idea that after one year of education, one year in university, freshmen, after they're freshmen, they think that they know so much, but they're still learning so much. So they just have this inflated ego or inflated sense of how much they know. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. I'm ready to agree if you can, da 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 So you can use this phrase to show that you are ready to finish the negotiations if the other person does something for you. 
So you're almost done with the negotiations. You've compromised, but you only want one more thing from the other person. So my example sentence is, I'm ready to agree if you can also give me a raise. So maybe your boss is asking you to take on more responsibility. Your boss is saying, okay, I need you to stay late every night to lock up the office. And you can say, okay, I, I can do that, but you also have to give me a raise or give me something. So I'm ready to agree if you can da 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 Okay, I'm already getting some good sentences here. Luna says, I'm ready to agree if you can give me a hundred million dollars. You are negotiating very high from the beginning. A <laughs> hundred million dollars. Wow. Um, Frenchie says, I am ready to agree if you can take my last suggestion. Okay, that's good. So maybe you suggested something before and you're saying, I will agree with you if you agree with me. Let's meet in the middle. Luna wants that big, big money. Anyone else? I'm going to go a little bit faster because I've spent too much time just talking about random facts. Um, yeah, we all want that, Luna, of course. <laughs> Anyone else? I'll wait a little bit, a few more minutes, but I need to keep going because we're running out of time and I have a few of these left. I'm ready to agree if you can do your homework on time. So I guess you're speaking as a teacher or maybe as a mother talking to your child, wanting them to do their homework on time. I'm ready to agree if you can give me your car. Oh my goodness, you people want all the money and all the cars. You are negotiating very high. Okay, let's move on to the next phrase. Try to see it from my point of view. Try to see it from my point of view. So use this phrase to ask the other person to understand your position. Uh, my example sentence is, you say that you can give me a new office, but try to see it from my point of view. So in this example, I'm saying maybe I'm asking for a raise, like I need more money. I've been working here for five years. I need a promotion. I need a raise. But your boss won't give you a raise. Your boss will only give you a new office, but not more money. And you can say, well, you say that you can give me a new office, but try to see it from my point of view. I don't need a new office. I need more money. A new office is nice, but you're not giving me what I need here. So try to see it from my point of view means try to put yourself in my shoes. Try to understand from my side. Can you give me any maybe thoughts or sentences here. So try to see it from my point of view. Or maybe earlier we talked about uh, the situation where your husband or wife thinks that you are ordering too much expensive food for dinner and they want you to stop ordering food and cook and clean dinner. And you say, I know that we are spending too much money, but try to see it from my point of view. I hate always being the one who has to cook and clean. It is not fun. Try to see it from my point of view. Oh, Luna has a great example. You say that you don't have time to hang out, but try to see it from my point of view. I literally don't have time. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I have lost a couple of friends um, because they don't have kids or they're single and they don't understand why I don't have time to do things anymore because I have kids and they just try to see it my, from my point of view but I think it's harder for people who don't have kids or who are single to understand I literally do not have time to do things with kids I, I can't just pop out to the bar for until 3 a.m. and in Itaewon or something and go meet people and hang out I can't do that I can't do it I, I don't do things like that so yeah they have to understand that I literally don't have time uh, let's look at some of these others. Fritchie says, I work so hard, boss, but I am the last one to get promoted. Try to see it from my point of view. That's a great example. In says, try to see it from my point of view. You also starve if your salary is the same as my salary. Is the same. Before the word same, we almost, almost, almost always use the. Almost always. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Young 2 Mom says, even if you were true, try to see it. Okay. 
Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You are a good father. Oh, for me? Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, not always, but I try. I'm just not a social person anyway. Uh, let's see. To have a lot on one's plate. This is not actually talking about food, although that's the picture I've put in. We use this phrase to explain that you are very busy. Like me. I'm very busy. You can, <laughs> you might hear my kids uh, crying in the background. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, you might say that, you know, you're compromising with someone. Your boss wants you to work on the weekends. And you can say, I really can't work on the weekends. I already have a lot on my plate. So it means that I already am super, super busy. I cannot do this extra work. I already have a lot on my plate. I'm sure that everyone here in this chat room has a lot on their plate. You can be very, very, very busy with work or studying or just chores at home. So can you give me an example with to have a lot on your plate? We have eight more minutes. I'm going to try to go through at least one or two more of these phrases. To have a lot on one's plate. Uh, Luna says, don't dump all your work on me. I already have a lot on my plate. That's good. Yep. Don't dump your work. That's a good good expression. Frenchie says, teacher, I am doing a part-time job. I work for 14 hours a day and you gave me so much homework. I already have a lot on my plate. <laughs> Wait, part-time job, 14 hours a day? That does not sound like part-time. That sounds like two full-time jobs. You're working too much. Wow, that is a lot of work. My, um, the hardest job I ever had was working at an SAT prep academy in Gangnam. This was a long time ago, long time ago. This was like, I don't know, 10 years ago. And it's the hardest job I ever had. I didn't, I didn't last for very long because they just, they burned me out. That's a good expression. Burn you out. It means too much work and you can't do anymore. I was literally teaching literally teaching in class eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. Saturday, I taught 10 hours straight, no breaks, not even for lunch, 10 hours straight. And on Sundays, I taught for four hours straight. I had no days off. And in the time that I had off, I had to grade exams and homework. So it's not like I just finished and could go home. I had to grade. I was working, I was sleeping literally two or three hours a night every night. I could not function. I couldn't think. I lost so much weight. It was terrible. So yeah, too many working hours is too much. 14 hours a day is not healthy. Okay, let's see. Maybe we have time for one or two more. Um, to pull one's weight. So to pull one's weight. Again, this does not mean literally. It doesn't mean to physically pull your weight. We use this phrase to talk about someone doing enough work and not being lazy. So if you say, she is not pulling her own weight, that means that they're not doing the work. They're not doing enough work for the team. They're hurting the team because they're being lazy. Or you can tell someone, you need to pull your own weight. You need to work hard as a team. We all need to do our own share, our own part of the work. So it is to pull one's own weight. I forgot to write that word. You need to put own. To pull his own weight. To pull your own weight. To pull my own weight. Uh, Luna says, how much money they give teacher with that harsh situation? That was the example that I made a lot of money, but it wasn't worth it. The, the money is not everything. Yeah, it was, it was good money, but um, yeah, not fun. Not, not worth it at all. But it was, it was, I wouldn't say it's the most money I've ever made, but it was, it was very good money. I, I, I would never do that again. Uh, let's see. Let me go through some of these comments. Young Two Mom says, I want to play with you, but I already have a lot on my plate. Uh, In says, were you a slave? I was not a slave. I was just trying to make money, but there are better ways to make money. Uh, I can pull my own weight, so don't worry about it. Did you just ask vacation? You didn't pull your own weight. No vacation. <laughs> Very strict. No vacation. 
Yeah, so pull your own weight means to do your work. So at the job, if you're at a job and you're on a team with other people, you know, when you're on a team, there's always one lazy person. There's always one person who's not doing enough work. And we say that person is not pulling their own weight. They're not doing what they should do. So other people have to pull them. They have to pull their weight and do extra work because one person is being lazy. And that's not fun. Okay, I think we have time for one more phrase. Let's look at it. To iron things out. To iron things out. So this is an iron. This is, you know, how you get the wrinkles out of clothes. But again, we're not talking physically. Literally. We're saying this is a phrase to have final discussions. It means that when you're having a discussion and you are negotiating with someone, maybe you've almost compromised. You've almost met in the middle. You're almost done. But there's a few wrinkles. There's a few little things that you need to smooth out and get perfectly flat. So that is to iron things out. It means that to make all the details specific. For example, if you're negotiating uh, with your boss for more vacation days and you say, okay, your boss says, okay, I will give you more vacation days. And you say, well, how many days? And they say, oh, well, we can, I think maybe two or three days a month. I'm not sure if I can give you two or three days. Let's, let's iron that out later. Let's iron out those details later. So it's like, we'll have another meeting later and decide if I can give you two days or three days, the very specific details. So you're almost done with the negotiations. It's just finishing those details. That is to iron things out. And usually we say this, we almost always say this at the end of a negotiation where we can't finish all the details right now. It's like we need to finish talking about this tomorrow. We're almost done. We've pretty much met in the middle, but let's talk about the details later. Or like my example sentence says, let's meet tomorrow to iron things out, to figure out the details. Okay, let me look at the chat. Um, in says, someone doesn't pull his own weight in the company. Yes, it's me. <laughs> You're very honest. Uh, Fredchie says, today is a big day, final day. We are going to iron things out with them. Okay, so you're going to finalize the negotiations. Luna says, I want to break up. Let's iron things out. We need to split our couple account. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's iron things out. Um, I guess that would work in that situation. It's a little bit brutal, but yeah, it would work. Um, Fredchie says, we need to schedule another day to iron things out. We can't, we don't have the time to finish these negotiations quite right now. Okay, and that is all from me today. I have run out of time. I believe that the next person, I believe Professor McCotter, Kiva McCotter, I think she begins at one o'clock. So you have time to go grab some lunch and then come back here in an hour for the next YouTube class. Um, I hope you have a great weekend. I think where I am, it's about to start raining like crazy. I wanted to go for a walk, but the weather is not permitting that. But I hope you have a good weekend. Don't work too hard. Don't order too expensive of food tonight, unless you deserve it. Some people should get some good food tonight. Compromise, negotiate, be patient, be happy, be healthy. Have a great weekend. It was fun being with you guys again. Bye.